Madam Speaker. The Premier has spent the last three years blaming the NDP several times a day, every day, for problems in Manitoba's health care system. At the same time, he and successive health ministers decided to embrace and defend plans developed under the NDP to close ERs, rural ambulance stations, and that have led the health system into a valley of despair. One of the consequences of this plan is that patients who could be treated in a single location may now have to ride by ambulance from one site to another. This interfacility transfer by ambulance is supposed to be covered by the province at no cost to the patient, as this press release from April 3rd, 2018 shows. We have heard from patients that they are being billed for this service. Has this policy changed? Has this government hiked interfacility ambulance transfer fees? Are you trying to table that? I am trying to table it, yes. Uh, no, there you go. <laughs> the Honourable First Minister. Thank you. Madam Speaker, under the... Uh, <coughs> one, of, one of the challenges uh, that we inherited was the fact that uh, Many of the uh, so-called emergency rooms waits were excessive, as I had it uh, earlier. A second challenge many Manitoba families had to face was the fact that, th because there wasn't a concentration of uh, equipment or testing diagnostic capability or experts in some of the facilities, family members uh, were finally admitted. Who were finally admitted to a facility uh, then had to be subsequently transferred out of it and moved to another facility after. One of the consequences of the changes we've already implemented is that thousands of Manitobans will not have to undergo that difficult and painful transfer, nor will their family members be put in that situation. And Madam Speaker, that is one of the consequences. I appreciate the member highlighting the issue of secondary transfers because those numbers have come down significantly and helped thousands of Manitoba families uh, avoid that pain. The Honourable Leader of the Second Opposition on a supplementary question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I table an invoice well, from the City of Winnipeg to a patient who was transferred last year from the birthing centre in St. Boniface to St. Boniface, Boniface Hospital. The bill is for $340. When we look at the government's budget, there is no change in revenues or expenditures for emergency services, which one might expect if this government were going to reduce fees. And there has been an ongoing dispute between the province and the City of Winnipeg about this very issue. In December 2017, the City Fire and Paramedic Chief said the provincial funding cuts left Winnipeg with a shortfall of millions, and the City said they wanted to get out of the ambulance service entirely. Like you're Is this Premier future. making up for lost ambulance revenue by double and triple charging Manitobans for ambulance fees for interfacility inter transfers instead? The Honourable First Minister. No, of course not, Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, of course not. But, uh, what we did inherit were some of the highest ambulance fees, if not the highest ambulance fees in the country uh, when we came into government. And that was causing problems for many Manitoba families uh, who were reluctant to even call the ambulance when they needed care and were in severe pain or symptoms appeared that should have allowed them to make their way to an emergency room to be diagnosed. They chose not to. They chose to uh, transport themselves. They chose to have a family member transport them. They chose to walk. Madam Speaker, so this is why uh, we have reduced the ambulance fees by 50 percent. The Honourable Leader of the Second Opposition on a final supplementary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The boasting this government is doing about saving money on health care is like someone boasting about how much money they save because they're eating for free on someone else's tab. This government is blundering ahead with an NDP plan to close ERs over the objections of nurses, doctors, health care workers, patients, and their own wait times task force. The dispute over funding well, with the City of Winnipeg is because the WRHA froze ambulance funding at 2016 levels. That is exactly what this government has done on health care across the board. Frozen spending at 2016 levels. Will the Premier just admit that his ambulance fee promise was a sham since he is raising fees on interfacility transfers for Manitobans by $250? The Honourable First Minister. Well, speaking of eating on someone else's tab, the member's position is that the NDP didn't get us into enough debt and that the biggest problem they had in government was that they didn't borrow more. That's his advocacy. Speaking of eating on someone else's tab, he also advocates that we should raise taxes in addition to running larger debts and deficits, which would be stealing from our own children and from our grandchildren as well in some cases. So 
Madam Speaker, the member has some expertise in advocating for eating on someone else's tab. He also represents a political philosophy which says that the federal government should be supported in reducing health care support for the province of Manitoba, which it is doing. So we'll stand up for Manitobans. He can continue to stand up for who knows what, Madam Speaker.